Good evening, it's 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Mr. Gelinas of Valley Building. Okay, so I'm here actually to hand these up uh, regarding 101 East Street in Hatton. Okay. Pictures. Oh, okay, that's the, that's the beauty of the green point. building on the corner of Easton Route 11. <coughs> yeah, five feet off the highway. Very Four close to the corner, yes. Um, so we reached, recently purchased the property at 101 East Street, which is, a, as you just said, an old building located at the intersection there across from East Hampton Savings. It's a greenhouse with detached, uh, what's been used as a commercial space in the past. The house was rented up until recently, and the back building was at one point kind of a small niche record store. It was called um, well, Punk Independent Records at yeah, the time. Yeah, okay. Yep, okay. So the building, as we know, has been run down, has been an eyesore for years. Uh, we acquired it from a New York-based real estate developer who had purchased it in speculations of putting a, a Walgreens there at one point. Um, so what our intent is to continue the use of the house as a residential structure, um, as it's been used in the past, and take that back, back building and restore that and use that as an office space for our offices. Um, we want to retain the colonial character of the space and improve the aesthetics of that center corner in town. Uh, we're asking basically for a waiver of site plan approval for the initial stage of our project as there'll be no exterior expansion uh, to the property and the use will basically continue as it has in the past. The way we kind of uh, foresee this is doing this in basically three phases. Uh, phase one is the existing residential house which we'd like to repair and renovate again within the existing footprint there. Uh, we're looking to temporarily run our office out of that space while we renovate the back barn space. Uh, during this phase, the exterior will see colonial restoration of that building, of the, the entire structure. Uh, well, this would go ahead. That building and the front building? Yeah, so they're, they're not connected, they look connected. I know they're not right, yeah. they're separate. Yeah, those Here two we'll structures, be. right, barely, very close. Um, so, back building being the part that uh, I would say is what, if this is Route 9, you've got the house in the back building. Um, so what we're looking to do is basically replace the roofing, the siding, the windows of the structure, uh, maintain a complete colonial uh, look and feel. So the colors would be a dark charcoal to a gray, the slate roofing shingles, um, dark charcoal to a slate shingle, maintaining all the trim details of that property. So all the white colonial corners that it has, it has a wider corner and a detail uh, with a harbor gray or a deep granite gray exterior siding in the clapboard style. Uh, the back building we would either match in color or do a barn red in tone for the, for the back structure. The windows would be a high-end architectural black sash style colonial window with colonial grills. And we'd like to add some dim carriage style lighting to the exterior of the building for aesthetics. Um, when it comes to signage, I would come forward separately with that once it's designed and, and bring that to the board um, in a separate session. Phase two would be the renovation of that back building that we're talking about, kind of what we could call a shop or a barn or a retail space. Um, so that's located adjacent to the residential structure. That was that record store space. Uh, no exterior footprint changes to that as well. Basically renovating and repairing that to look like we'd like to maintain the barn look but put the offices in there. Um, so at that time, once that's done, we would operate our business out of that location. The house would then continue to be renovated as a residential. Phase three is just something we foresee in the future is, is just potential expansion down that stretch of land, but that's something that we would look forward, uh, bring forward with site plan approval and things like that at that time. Okay. I would love to see that building looking good again. It is a bit shabby. <laughs> um, realizing you're going to put a lot of money into this building, and I'm sure you're aware of the plans to expand Route 9. Yes. And you will probably, no, not probably, you could be impacted. Yes. That's your risk, that's your business. Yeah, that's your business. Not Understood, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, you're just going to use your office space and no others. The, that, that barn would just be our own offices. How many, how, about how many people? Um, so, property manager, myself, and we have an administrative assistant right now. So, right now, there's three of us. There's a bookkeeper that comes in a few times a week. Um, so, there's three of us full time and one part time bookkeeper. 
I don't, I mean, because they, the, the record store came in, they even had a little bit of, uh, I think they would take plan approval for that, if I remember. We did. And there was never a problem with what little business they had. I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. I don't, it sounded like they didn't do a whole lot, a lot of, I think there was a lot of uh, internet, if I remember, they said that was okay. really their stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, am, I don't have a problem waiting site plan approval for, for what you're saying um, because it's going to be an improvement to the property. Other comments? No. Well, just uh, the building is going to look like page two. Bottom page two. Just to clarify. So that's the, the basic color scheme. Um, black sash, white trim. I mean, Structurally, it doesn't look like that, but that is a similar style building to that. Mm -hmm. So you won't, and you won't have the columns. A new building, right? Well, this this is that building has a similar style, but it, it's you know it's it's a cape style versus that. So it has the corners like that, right? You know, it has a similar style. No, no, no I'm, I'm saying you're not going to have these columns in the front. No, you're not going to have a porch. We won't have a porch. No, there'll be no footprint change. And you'll be, I know, you just going to imagine this, but you're basically going to look like this. Facade without the porch. Correct. Okay. And either a gray tone like that, or on the second page, is the deeper gray. And I wanted to go all white. The recommendation was that the soot and stuff from Route Nine will look horrendous in no time. So to go with a gray was a was a recommendation we had. Yeah. And then think of that you're probably right, especially being so close to the road. The salt spray is going to right would destroy the Russell Street side in no time. Mm -hmm. But it still practically piles up against the building. It's, it's close to the road, man. So, so do you want to take a look at the lighting, the post, post lighting? Do you want to have any exterior lighting on the property? What, what I really would like to do from an aesthetic standpoint was, if I can borrow this one, was, and, and Bill had mentioned that, that we'd have to be careful of how it, how it kind of Shine, shine. shine. So we, line, yeah. I mentioned aesthetically, I would do. I would like to do some dim carriage style lighting, um, possibly along these corners or along here, but dim, not something that would be bright. More for an aesthetic. Um, as you get to the other side, where you have entry and egress, we would put normal, the normal yeah. bulbs. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I. I, I do just realized that we may be coming back to you. If it's a, if it's these, on these two sides saying, hey, it's, it's too bright, you got to do something, either yeah. dim or light. I'm assuming it's going to be LEDs. Probably a warm, but but I, I, I don't want it bright. That's what I mean. So yeah. it's going to have to be like a, what they call it, a low color LED yeah. Yeah. as opposed to a high color. Right, right. Yeah. I think that's the right term. Okay. And then this, you know, the signage I want to, we'll, we'll talk about separately. Right now we just want to get the building improved, but the building being so close to the road, I think working with you guys on a, a proper placement for signage will be another discussion. Okay. So I'm not participating, so. All right, I'll make a motion to Wave site plan approval for 101 East Street for Stigilinus. Um, to wave site for the following, based upon a determination that the proposed work constitutes an external enlargement of West End. There's actually no external enlargement. Um, there's no external enlargement. Determine that the proposed condition constitutes no external enlargement. Go the floor area. Leave that one. And it's to renovate with gray siding, white trim, black, <laughs> black window trim, carriage lighting, dim carriage lighting. Dim carriage lighting. Um, that's the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 3 0 with one absent and one abstention. Stanley Mollock live there? No. No. Don't, don't recall. Is 
met a collective in church every Sunday, so I might find a bunch of quarters there <laughs> Okay, I'll take care of that. Next one is uh, Mr. Clark of Steve Lewis Subaru. Hello, guys. Uh, we're here to seek site plan approval for additional parking at the Buffalo Farm. Uh, we bet, uh, I met a few weeks ago with the select board and they had wanted to, they said I seek out approval for a site plan approval for that lot uh, to have that parcel approved for the additional parking. Okay. We started with them uh, about a year ago. It was originally going to be a temporary placement for additional units. Um, we then increased our allocation because we started selling all these units. Our original plan was to purchase the property next door to expand our lot and then modify our license you know, with, with that uh, build out at that time. Uh, that part fell through, so now we're at the point where we have a need for this additional inventory, but uh, we need to place the foot. Do you own that property? We do not. We're renting that property uh, from Ted Crooker. Uh, we're in the process of executing a long-term lease with him as well. With your, If we get the approval that we need, we're, we're going to sign a long-term lease with him on that property. Site plan approval allows for shared parking, but it doesn't really address off-site sh shared parking like that. Um, plus, you're really, in effect, opening uh, a dealership across the street, and According to our zoning bylaws, if only one, you cannot have another dealership right. within a certain distance. Yeah, there's no retail miles. that's done out of that lot is just storage. Yeah, there's no customers brought to that lot. There's no retail done out of that lot whatsoever. Do you, and you know, what kind of leeway do you have of where you could park the cars on that lot? Can you park them further off the road but kind of out of sight, out of mind? Can, you, can we require you to put a fence up so that they're kind of hidden? So that people don't go over there and thinking, like you said, it's okay if somebody goes right. over there looking at your vehicles. And then that's understood. But that's what we want to avoid. Mm -hmm. Because you want the traffic, and you want the traffic at of your place. Yeah, it does us no good down there. You yeah. don't want yeah. it, it does, any, it does a town no good, and you no good to have it over there. Yeah. Well, how did they get there in the first place? Exactly. You didn't, this. you didn't come to that, you just did it, right? Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I don't know what the process was that was handled a year ago. Steve was handling that process at that time. I'm, I'm in the process of taking it over to complete this at this time. So I don't know what processes they went through. Uh, Steve and I know Steve and his attorney at that time were looking at the different options that they had available. We, had, we were given uh, from the select board approval for the temporary time frame for that. Um, but uh, that time frame has expired, and that's why we're in the situation we are now. So we might be, my recollection is that <clears throat> He just cut a deal with the owners of the property, yeah. moved the cars there, and when people started complaining about it um, to the building inspector, um, building inspector talked to Steve Lewis, was told that it was going to be a temporary thing, and rather than make a federal case out of it, the the simple way to kick the can down the road was for the selectmen to basically say, okay, Tim, don't enforce the building, don't enforce zoning until spring. Um, now, I did talk with uh, Steve Lewis's lawyer at one point about, um, just as you were saying, to try to see if there's a way to expand, to address shared parking. Um, to allow uh, people to meet their parking needs with leased space as long as it is a you know, long-term lease or something like that. And that didn't, didn't go anywhere that I know of. Uh, I never got back to me on that. Um, I think he was going to look at Northampton and see how they handled it. Um, Dave, uh, Dave Noonan had talked to me about that and he mentioned that he was going to um, draft a proposed zoning bylaw. Uh, for the shared parking for that, with again, through who, who was saying this? David Noonan. David Noonan's oh, attorney. Yeah. Right. I remember him well. Just around the corner from your old office. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, 
But we did make some concessions, even in the parking on the existing lot. Remember, uh, they were they wanted more cars, and we kind of let them come in tighter. And one of the things that we were really concerned about when they came in, you're you're, you're the messengers, but so you unfortunately you're probably going to get shot. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just straight out honest with you, so you don't yeah. feel too bad. Um, we were very concerned about the initial site plan approval for the property, and. They came in with this elaborate plan, Steve Lewis Company, at the original site plan approval for the property, when they came in for the dealership, about how they were going to park the cars at the rear, they were going to park them like this, they are going to do like this, and they would only be on site. We wouldn't have anything else off site because other dealerships, especially in Northampton, I know, I think it's Ford, is parked at the moment where it drives the funeral. If you go over there, you can't see it from the road, but you go over there for a, 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 a funeral or a wake. And there's a lot of times a number of cars parked in the rear, but they're way out of sight, out of mind. But in any case, we we're concerned we didn't want that to happen here. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Lewis and the attorney and their site plan stuff was said, no, no, we're going to be on site, we're going to be here, we're going to be confined, yep. we won't be doing this. And it wasn't a few months after that they opened that, lo and behold, they just showed up at the Buff Dyson farm one time. And not 10 cars, but obviously a lot of them. And like Mr. Dwyer says, from then on end, you know, then it was a year, and oh, you know, now you're coming in here, and we have a letter that we gave to the zoning enforcement officer dated uh, 9 19 2016 that we sent to the building to the zoning enforcement officer about the parking at the bison farm. And that was going to kind of help trigger some of the events. Oh, yeah, we're going to be out of there by April and May, we're going to be all done, and we'll, we won't continue. You know, now it's eight months later, and Steve Lewis Super was in here pleading forgiveness for violating zoning bylaw. I mean, if they come in a year ago and says, hey, you know, our business is good, we have to do this, what can we do? Mm -hmm. And instead, they just, I get the feeling that they thumb the nose that the town of Hadley said, we're going to do what we want, and too bad. And that really bothers me when that happened. Bothers me too. You know, I understand we don't want to be negative to business. Sure. But we would like businesses to be upfront. We have a problem. What can we do about it? And that didn't happen here, obviously. And Tom Hadley gets nothing for allowing this. There's no tax money in those cards. There's no, there's absolutely no incentive for the town to approve this, except this is Mr. Sue Steve Blue Subaru was asking for it. Okay, because those are all, that's the, none of those vehicles that are over there are stacked as any kind of, you know, use. They just, I mean, property stacks, right. but it doesn't have any effect on the town for the town. The additional storage is crucial for our, our, our continued success and our continued growth. And, and on the flip side of that, I don't want, we don't want to be negative to the business. We understand right. where you are, but just, it just rubs me the wrong way that we have to. I do understand. This. I understand why you guys feel the way you're doing. You're absolutely entitled. You're 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 not wrong in, in the you way know. that you do feel. The so, way that it's it was handled up to this point, I agree. It could have been it could have been and should have been done much differently. Uh, I'm the general manager of the store, and my responsibility is for the staff that works there and for their oper their jobs and, and to continue the success of these people that I that I take care of. You know, we without that additional storage, we can't maintain the volume that we're used to. We can't maintain the local clients that we've sold. I mean, when, when we moved to Hadley, our, our, our projected growth was nowhere near what we've been able to achieve at this facility. So basically, basically, business is good. Business is unbelievable. You know, well, maybe, well, maybe, that's, maybe that's not the proper site for your business then if you're going to have this kind of exponential growth. Yep. Maybe you should. Now, let me ask another. I mean, yep. so to, to go, you can give you site plan approval. We'll need a plan, mm -hmm. and we need two sets of mailing labels and butters. Yep. Um, so that we can mail stuff out, that we can give you an application, which is a simple application. Mm -hmm. Are you here for the uh, defendant subdivision? That had been postponed to January 16th because they're not ready to go tonight. So there will be no meeting tonight. Just so that, <coughs> so that you don't hang around if you don't want to. They will be making an informal presentation, but it will not be a public hearing. And there will be no comments taken because we're not going to open a public hearing tonight. Okay, well, you're going to be discussing the project. Do the party? You're going to be discussing Very briefly. Okay, fine. Very briefly. I'm thinking of showing 
Right. But you won't be able to make any comments. That's right. Okay. Are they going to show That's any plans? So, probably not. Mm -hmm. No plans will be due. Okay. okay. So, but you, you, but you, you, you can say, I just don't want, I just want you to be aware that it's not going to be a great discussion on it. Okay. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay. We unexpectedly found one of our members wasn't able to come tonight, so we're below strength for approving projects. Yes. Okay. So, procedurally, uh, and I think this was an issue that came up with between the building inspector and the town administrator at one point. Um, one question is whether Steve, Steve Lewis, Subaru, is not in violation of its site plan. Everything that was approved for that site it is in compliance. Is proper. So, well, it's almost like you need to have the owners of the, where you are parking, right. bring something forward. Yeah, you, you could bring it forward, it'll have to be on their behalf, mm -hmm. and we'll need a letter stating that you can do this. Right. Okay, because we had what happened once before was, believe it or not, it's a little quick story. Somebody came in and applied for subdivision. We sent the notices out. The owner of the property comes in and says, you can't do that. I never authorized it. <laughs> it was some relatives that wanted to subdivide their relative's property. And the owner came in and says, there's no way you're going to do that. I don't want that. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> okay, so since then, we've learned that if somebody comes in, such as yourself, yep. and you want to do that, just you know, we just need a letter from them saying that you are yep. acting as their agent for this. We'll be able to bring that in uh, along with the lease as well. Okay. So are okay. you saying that having the cars parked there so close close to the ro road are no and not at all part of the marketing plan? Not one bit. People can see them. I'll, we can turn them around. I'll park them at the back of that lot, wherever you need me to well, do. It, you know, I can see them. Pretty nice. I got me. You know, honestly, the reason they're parked the way they are is because the owner of the property asked me to. Yeah. He didn't like the way we had them before. I just parked them for, you know, to make it where it's functional for plowing and to get in and out of there. I think there's no problem. The property's got a problem. We want to make it, we don't want them to be, how do I say this? You can think about how you, I don't know, I don't, I don't know the right answer to this. Yeah. I will give you a couple of things to look at. We don't want them, like I said before, where they're coming on site and looking at the, Usually looking at the cars because it's not right for the town, it's traffic wise, nor is it right for your business. Mm -hmm. But we also don't want to, do not want to make it unsightly. Simply having cars parked there, they're brand new. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not an ice wall by any stretch. Right. But we want to make sure that they don't become a, what's the right word? Attractive nuisance. Right. Okay. You know, we only park brand new Subarus there. You know, they don't. I don't want to say they don't attract attention because, of course, all new cars attract attention. But there's nothing that stands out as far as what they're there. It's just parking. You know, we don't park any used vehicles or anything else that would look different or catch eye. We just, you know, I think everyone, we probably all, as we drive by, we see it out of, you know, you see it out of the corner of your eye now. You know, it's not. So I think there's some, some way to address that concern. Well, okay. if, even, even if he addresses it, Jim, the, the fact that the planning board received a petition. We didn't submit the uh, no more than two automobile dealerships within two miles of each other. Mm -hmm. The people were concerned that uh, a business district is sure. going to be Turn more like mile. King Street, yep. uh, Auto Mart, and you're going to have automobile dealership after automobile dealership, blah, blah, blah. So this really, I, I don't see how you can get around that particular bylaw. Uh, by calling it an auxiliary park. I mean, if if the owners of the the Buffalo firm, mm -hmm. they uh, they're really going to be applying for the site plan. They're applying for an automobile dealership, in effect. So you would have two automobile dealerships next to each other. Whether you call it it's yours or theirs, but I think it defies the the intent of what the petitioners gave the planning board when they presented that bylaw to the town meeting. So that's kind of my editorial comment. And I, I understand that. It, if we were retailing vehicles out of that location, I would agree with that statement. But again, there's zero retail. There's no customers that are brought to that lot. When you have next door. part of your retail operation. You just told us if you 
you didn't have that lot there, your business wouldn't be as booming as it was. Yep. As storage, so it's directly yes. connected to your yep. business. It's crucial as storage, yes. Yeah. You had a chance to buy the parcel next door. What happened? That fell through for, for reasons that I'm not uh, in the know. So we have recently approved a freestanding parking lot. Um, so we know we can do it if we want. If no one approach it that way, we we got to look at how, we got to look at that closely. We're not going to decide tonight. If the gentleman just apply, goes to the to the proceed process, mm -hmm. and when we have the public hearing, we can review that in much greater detail, and maybe we can even get a two cent comment from town council. If that possible, yeah, probably. So we we'll meet again in two weeks. If you have the if you have the information, you can apply that night, and we can schedule a public hearing. So if you want to, the way to look, go through it, uh, our zoning bylaw is uh, online. Mm -hmm. uh, the section is site plan approval, which I think is either six or seven. Six, section seven. Yep. There's a menu, laundry list of uh, plan requirements in there. Not everything applies to everyone, but I think you can look through it and you may want to consult with council. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, and you were going to want to talk with the landlord because mm -hmm. it's being brought in their name. Uh, probably we would be very interested in how this affects things like drainage on the site. Uh, this site was originally approved under the agricultural exemption to zoning, so we didn't look. And, and it was uh, it's just it's just dirt there. It's not paved at that spot. Is it? It's gravel. 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 Yeah. It's just like a black like a uh, well, there, there, there are there are three parcels there. That's parcel A, B, and C. So. That's right. So the, the other part of it is that the for various historical reasons the that property is broken up into three separate parcels. Mm -hmm. So you want to be sure that you are bringing the application in the name of the right party. Plus now the other complicating issue is the fact that the uh, Chinese Immersion School has drop off and pick up for their buses there too. Right. So how much activity are we going to have? Is that going to be exempt uh, or is that going to be, well, that will be discussed at the at the meeting. So that affects things like traffic flow. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we also need um, a butters list. I'm uh, putting this on here. Okay. And Mr. Mitchikowski, who was probably the most vociferous pro-business member of this board, aside from me, called me earlier tonight and exp expressed his concern about this, this lot over there, this room. Sway him too. Okay, so here's the application. It's very straightforward. And on the back, just so you'll know, two sets of so two sets of bailing labels of a butters, mm -hmm. six sets of plans of what you're going to do, and some kind of a letter from the owner yep. that you can apply on their behalf. Thank you. Okay. And you can get the uh, names of a Butters. It's a Butters and a Butters to a Butters within 300 feet of the property line okay. of that site. You can get that from the assessor's office. They have a program. Okay. If you want to see the assessor, they know exactly. We said you want to set up a Butters, they know exactly what you're going to need. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, John. So right. we meet first and third Tuesdays. Okay. Uh, every month. Roderick Anderson. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Good evening, guys. Is uh, Roderick Anderson, executive director of the Springfield Institute and president of Pioneer Valley Coral and Natural Science Institute. We're a nonprofit organization um, promoting education and research here in the valley. Uh, we're growing coral. We're an aquaculture facility. We'll be growing coral uh, to assist researchers conducting proof of concept uh, towards everything from cancer drugs. Um, treating uh, uh, Alzheimer's, um, creating, uh, providing coral to regional uh, pet stores through our distribution networks, uh, 
and educational programming, hands-on educational ed uh, experience for high school students that are interested in uh, the natural sciences. The facility itself will consist of 15 uh, 96 by 24 by 12 inch uh, troughs where we'll be growing the coral out of. Uh, we are partnered with researchers currently from Northeastern, Harvard, UMass Amherst, um, and possibly Yale that are going to be doing their own proof of concept research and testing their, uh, their, their products uh, as they move towards commercialization in our facility. Our two main uh, researchers that we're working with are doing water filtration based on electroremediation technology. Um, so they purify uh, fresh water, groundwater, either coming out of your wells or you can attach it to your um, in-home water pumps or it can be scaled up for uh, industrial use with, uh, for instance, your new water system here in, uh, in the town. It neutralizes all bacteria, uh, most heavy metals, and all chemicals. The other researcher from Harvard, she does real-time cloud-based sensors that reads up to 20 uh, elements that are in the air, water, and soil. Um, and that's basically what we'll be doing out of our uh, facilities at uh, the One Mill Valley location. Okay. So you, what you want to do is you want to open a very mini micro research facility mm -hmm. at the One Mill, the new office building in One Mill Valley, One Mill Valley Road. Right. And you're looking for basically an approval to do that. Th yeah. They we already went through the the town licensing and everything. Okay. Yeah. What chemicals will you be using there? No, no chemicals. No chemicals. <coughs> this is all, uh, yeah. you're just going to be going basically coral. Yeah. Any signage. Any what? Signage. Si yes, we'll have a sign at the ladder <coughs> and in front of the, the door. If you could bring a picture. We, we, we can approve your use, mm -hmm. but before we give you final approval, we'd like to see what the sign is going to look like on the building. On the, on the front of the door? No, on the front of the door, yes. Okay. With the, just a picture of the sign, or, 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 or an artist, whatever you want to use, okay. with dimensions. Okay. It's, uh, I believe it's four feet by a foot, like right above the door frame. You have the double okay. doors. Just, just bring oh, a picture of that in at the next meeting, mm -hmm. just to cover the final okay. page. We can, yep. we, can, we can approve your, your use tonight. All right. Okay. How many square feet? It's just under 2,500 square feet. That's well, a good portion of the building, though. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that already yeah, has... will be the New England's only coral farm, actually. So how, so how quickly does coral grow? Yeah. I well, thought it took a long time. It, it, depending on the species, uh, we're doing primarily um, small polyp corals to more... Um, it, it could take up to two months, you know, before it's ready to be harvested and cut and Put it, you know, so so where, do you, where do you get the coral from? It's the seed coral for better. better yeah, you get it from the seed. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so we can afford it. Considered an we, invasive, spe invasive species. No. Does it bring it in here? No, 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 no. I don't. It won't grow any. This is saltwater coral. Yeah, right? these are all saltwater. There are no freshwater species of coral, so there's no risk of invasive species or anything like hmm. that. And we won't be dumping any water at all either. So only uh, we'll be replacing water as the evaporation happens, but. That's it. We won't be releasing right, the water. Could do all those things. Yeah, it's it's, it's the new rainforest. Cool. It's the new rainforest. It's. Um, I think the Great Barrier Reef, and that's just an that's just mm -hmm. that's an amazing thing. It is. It is, and we're hoping at some point, if uh, our projections uh, reach, we'll be able to expand our operations and actually become somewhat of a, a coral bank, similar wow. to uh, the seed bank out in uh, Switzerland. So they have upwards of uh, 300 species of coral there. That. And because of the Great Barrier Reef is, is dying off, that we will have. What, what, is, what is your business being called? Pioneer Valley Coral Natural Science Institute. Okay. Are, are there any more coral growing operations? In, in Not in New East? England. Not in New England. No. Nope. No, in Texas there's one. Yeah, there is. They're big out out west in California, oh, Ohio, yeah. Florida. You know, so we will be the first ones here. So, yeah, it's a relatively new industry because of the filtration and lighting requirements for the coral. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. The LED technology has reached that point where we can provide the appropriate light spectrums and everything. So, what's your degree in the? 
Actually, I run, actually my PhD work is, a, is in anthropology. Okay. Yeah. Right, so you're going to be pretty um, involved to know what this kind of stuff is going to be quite in depth. Yeah, well, I did the hobby uh, for over 20 years myself. So after I got out of the military, you know, a bunch of these guys kind of got into you know, marine hobbies. You know, so. I'm smiling at it. As a hobby, my daughter's roommate got her PhD in coral oh. and, uh, at Caltech. And mm -hmm. she traveled all over the world scuba diving. And yeah. it was kind of fun, she said. So yeah. Uh, yeah. An amazing uh, hobby. I can see where you would have yeah. excellent research, but you'd have fun doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to make a motion to waive site plan approval. Uh, but then I'm going to ask you to take this and fill in name, mailing address, okay. business name, and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval and approve business use in the aquifer for uh, the following, based upon the determination the proposed work constitutes no external enlargement of existing structure. Um, for want of a better word, I'm just going to say coral farm. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what we are. Interior. Okay, there will be no sign approval at this time, and you're using no process chemicals no. in the aquifer. No. no. Okay. Yeah, that's up to kill the corals. <laughs> it? Okay, so that's the motion. Second. All in favor. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No one, no one, yeah. Any against? Motion yeah. passes 4 0, 1 absent. So, that you, part. Okay. so if, if you would just, just take this, fill in the top part, mm -hmm. and um, just drop it off and, okay. and you can leave when you're done. All right, thank you. Okay, the public hearing that is scheduled for tonight. Um, the owner of Jan Joanne, Washkevitz Keller, and the, develop the developer is Valley Building. The, the public notice went out. We are going to directly postpone this public hearing without opening it to Janu January 16, 2018 at 7.15 right here. The reason for the um, postponement is we need four affirmative votes, no, three affirmative votes out of five um, for this to be approved. Mr. Dwyer is not participating in it. Uh, Mr. Bichkowski couldn't make it tonight, so that leaves three of us. All three would have to vote in favor of it, not that he wouldn't get the three affirmative votes, but Mr. Bichkowski has, uh, would like to participate, and there'll be no decision tonight anyway because some things are incomplete. So rather than open a public hearing and it make some legal things that have to be accomplished, if we don't open it at all, the direct postponement then those things are a different story. Uh, we'll just give a few comments to Mr. Gelinas. Um, I My biggest concern about the whole thing with subdivision, the details are a subdivision. But because you're over six lots, you need to provide, you provide what, eight lots? It's eight. So one lot must be um, an affordable building. Now you can do it on site or you can do it off site. I understand you want to do it off site. So before we get your approval, we would like to know and have the lease ready or the wording for the permanent um and the text of the restriction. Permanent restriction at the registry of deeds of where it's going to be. I'm assuming you know you're gonna you're gonna you know where you want to do it, I hope. Okay, so you're going to provide, before we get an approval, we will need to know exactly where it's going to be with the deed restriction to be recorded for that, okay, and how you're going to accomplish that. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you can do a rental, it doesn't have to be, because you've got eight building left that you're going to sell, the affordable unit does not have to be a sole uh, residence, it can be a rental. Um, is the third option the, the affordable housing trust? The affordable housing trust is, is there is a housing, there is wording in the bylaw for a affordable trust. However, the trust does not exist. Yeah. And it may not exist. We don't know that. 
So rather than say you could donate to the housing trust, um, right now it's not there. So we're letting you as a developer know up front, putting money into the trust is not an option in your case. So you're gonna do either the unit on within the eight lots or one unit off-site at one of your other facilities that you may own, or you could buy something. You could, you could convert, you could buy, it could be a rental, it could be a sell. Just be aware, aware that a sold home with this restriction can be extremely expensive and cumbersome to follow through on, whereas a rental, for whatever reason, is a much easier option as the developer is, is concerned, from what we've been told by other developers, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can look into that. But it's up to you, it's your responsibility to follow through on that one affordable unit where you may be. You couldn't go to before the CBA and ask for a waiver, as, um, as Mr. Uh, Roberts did? I would not be in favor of granting that waiver. My, my, my goal would be to try to, if we're going to develop this housing trust, to get as much money in it as possible. So we don't know that we want to develop this housing trust. Um, after, you know, okay. this, uh, is Larry going to be at the first meeting in January? No. He's going to be at the first meeting in February. He is, the Pine Valley Planning Commission is investigating whether they could be one of these uh, uh, contractor to address affordable housing. Um, because there are some independent, the Housing Authority of Hadley wants no part of uh, being responsible for the units other than what they have over in basically the Golden Court area. And that was from the direction they got from the state, um, their state unit, as opposed to somebody else telling them that. They said, don't, you don't want that. Some of the local housing authorities in Amherst, I think, do, they do do that. I'm not sure about Northampton, but for the most part, the state is directing the local housing authorities not to oversee this, any units other than what they're directly responsible for, for whatever reason. And that's what they're being told, so they're complying with that. And when we put the housing trust in, the wording a number of years ago, and even when we did it not too long ago for the senior housing, nobody said anything that they didn't want to do it. When Mr. Roberts was putting in the senior housing on East Street Gold, you probably heard what, what's happening with that. And he's when he went to the housing authority, they says, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna oversee your project as far as making sure the affordable affordability is upheld um, and, and directed. It was it, it put us into a quandary. What do we do? And because of that, he went to this EBA, he got a variance to donate to the town something in lieu of this um, and that's a bit of a quagmire right there so we're letting from my point of view we're letting any developer coming forward now with the housing trust it's probably not an option for you so we're letting you know up front before you put any money or much of any money into the project that you need to either provide a house a, a unit on site or off site within the town because i don't know if the housing trust um, it's a good idea in theory, but the devil in the details may make this not such a not such a workable plan for the town. Okay, so I don't want to give you a false security here. Well, did, we didn't vote on whether or not it's going to be an option. That's your opinion, right? That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. But that that but I'm letting you know up front that to, to come in with that because I got a feeling that. I know Mr. Mitchkowski is not in favor of putting this into a trust. Joe is not in favor of putting it into a trust right now because the trust doesn't exist. So we can't allow you to do something that doesn't happen, that we don't have right now. I'm not in favor of this right now for that simple reason. We have a housing trust and we go forward with it. By the time you go through with your subdivision, you can always, if you come in with a say, I'm going to put the unit, just for speaking purposes, not to put words in your mouth, on middle street. Okay, this is where I want to do it. You come in and you put the subdivision in. We have a housing trust in place. You say, hey, I don't want it on real street. I want to put the money into it with the trust. That option will still be there for you. Okay. But I don't want to let you give you a sense of 
I don't want to give you an opinion, a, a, a false sense of security right now that the trust will be there, because we don't know that it will be. It's going to go to town meeting for approval. Okay. Any other comments on the board on this? No, it's a... Uh, it is a it, it is a tough dilemma. And a mirror is as far as the subdivision itself. Goes. Yes, I, it is. And uh, from a subdivision point of view, uh, certainly you have Doucette as your uh, peer review engineer, and Doucette's going to do the inspection as well. I assume, you know. In other words, when you put the road in, we're not going to be there to make sure there's 14 inches of gravel compacted. Right. So, as so Doucette would check that. That would be the engineer of record. So as part of the subdivision, um, there are certain forms that need to be Correct. signed off on by the engineer of record, which would be from our office. Okay. So, so we, we would, take we would that sign responsibility. off. Right. We, that responsibility would fall to us. The only thing the town uh, would like to do or see and, or witness is the water installation. So they would like to be on site. Sure. The water department. Yeah. Absolutely. They're, uh, they're pretty out of about that, so. I know that um, there's another reason to defer. Um, I did uh, get an email from Marla Warner asking me how to comment on this, mm -hmm. and I haven't actually received any comments from him. <coughs> so you may want to reach out to him. Yeah, we have. Uh, well, it, the, the email was a couple of days ago. Ask you how to make comments, so you might want to recontact him to see what's on his mind now. I think he was contacted primarily to see if uh, the storm system needs to be on a separate parcel or if under the cul de sac is appropriate. There's not good, is there going to be a, a spike space at the end of the cul de sac? The, uh, it's going to be abutting the next property. Uh, towards the west. I, I, do you want me to put up a plan uh, we're talking about? No, it? just uh, yeah. because yeah, so that's always uh, a concern. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's, it's, I believe it's agricultural land so towards the west, and it's also... Um, to the west, correct. To, to the west. And along the western edge, there's a lot, it's the site, the larger parcels are covered by um, a number of uh, conservation restrictions right. okay. uh, in regards to um, a brook that runs... A, Adjacent to the property line. Yeah, the Russellville so, Brook. Yeah, yeah Russell back Brook. there. So the end of the subdivision is a dive down. It's near where the, it's one lot further, or two, two streets further than where the power, uh, where the, uh, the phone easement, or phone yeah. cable was laid. Yeah. So, so, I mean, the end of the cul-de-sac, that last lot, that's, that'll be the end of, of any development okay. um, on this property. All right, so you have anything? Any questions? Just, um, just trying to grasp the inclusionary zoning. Is it so? Is it going to make sense to come forward with some ideas on how to accomplish it? I mean, basically, like well, you can build a house there with some of the stuff that's pending in terms of resolution. You think there could be an option to to hold it? Because I know there's a phased-in table. That's in the bylaw that says, you know, if you hit this percent, this percent has to be satisfied. In this case, eight lots at 15% is, is effectively a one unit. It's one lot, right. Well, so, one, one unit. One unit, right. So, what I guess I'm getting at is if, because if, it might be difficult, it's almost like a 1031 exchange in terms of, you know, is there something out there? And in Hadley inventory can be difficult if you're looking for a rental unit, if there's not a lot that's always for sale to look at a, a transitionary plan of escrowing funds or something temporarily while a resolution or a solution's in place. I'm just, I'm trying to think of timelines. Um, they have that table to phase it in. I'm wondering if it's possible, or even holding a lot back until, you know what I mean? It's just a question of how all that lays out timing because there's not the full plan. Well, you're the, first, you're the first person down this path. So, yeah. yes, yeah, I, I think you, you, you're, the, you, you're the first subdivision. So we're in virgin grounds, obviously, mm -hmm. and just like with the senior housing, we, we, we're, we're still stumbling. We haven't got that one 100% yet. Um, and we don't want to have that happen here for both your sake mm -hmm. and our sake. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, 
you're not going to go and put in, I don't think, all eight lots this year. You're probably going to go in as far as you want to maybe build whatever, two, three, four, and then over the next several years. So that one lot could be held back as what if. And the final lot, okay, the trust fund doesn't exist. It's not going to exist. So you either make that one lot affordable or someplace in the town of Hadley you find a rental unit or whatever and make that one affordable. So yeah, we, 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 we can have, we can be flexible within reason on this one. Understood. Okay. Understood. Just to, to clarify, if, if he does find a rental unit, buys it, will the Howley Housing Authority manager or no, he no. will be responsible? He, he will be responsible. In perpetuity. In perpetuity, he will need to make this rental unit affordable with a permanent deed restriction and go through. Now, the one good thing, by the time he gets around to doing this, we will have hopefully the information of the prior day rally plans, which in fact I would encourage you to attend the first Tuesday meeting in February, because Larry will be here for the Prairie Valley Planning Commission. He will be explaining to us what he's learned from going to these uh, seminars. He was supposed to have some kind of a seminar on what it takes to do this. He was going to be one of the people supposedly trained to oversee this. And it may be very beneficial for you for a couple of reasons. What does this really mean to you? Can they really do this? He might have some kind of idea of the ballpark cost, and he could explain to you why a rental is so much cleaner to do this than a sell unit. Okay, because I don't fully understand that one myself. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a, it, the housing trust is one thing, but the whole affordability factor, whether it's a trust or rental or actual ownership, is a complicated process. I'll leave it at that. Okay. So I want you to know what you're getting into on all views, and we want to make sure that we do it the right way. Do you have the deed restrict a lot or a dwelling? Like, you, you know what I'm saying is if, if, if we have a piece of land and it's got the deed restriction, then... We don't know that. Okay. I don't, we don't we, it, Good question. I, I'm just, I don't know, but I don't want to guess. Well, if, if they had gone through with this at the, at the senior housing on East Street, the owner doesn't own the lot, he owns the building, okay? The, the, no, lot, no. the lot stays with the developer, or, or the uh, or the. No, uh, no, those are condos. Kind of those are simply condos over there. Yeah, same difference. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't want to guess because it's again you're you're not having condos. You're having plain old single family dwellings, right. and um, to de restrict a single family dwelling, I'm assuming you're probably going to have relatively upscale buildings, and to have probably. Pick a number, a rather expensive house, and to have somebody in the middle of this put in something that's going to be an affordable unit, you're not going to have an affordable unit anywhere near of what um, Mr. Ralph would tell. I think it's a for this area. I think the affordability was two twenty-five a month to two hundred, three hundred dollars a month, and. Probably the houses you want to put up, I'm going to guess that may not even, that probably wouldn't pay the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to picture my house that I'm paying. Well, I pay, I pay just to, I pay 400 bucks, a little over 400 bucks a month of tax on my house. That's right. not. I mean, have the tax are relatively good. Yeah. And so and it's still a lot. And so, anyways. Yeah. So that's, I'm guessing you probably, if you do anything, you probably want to put something off-site. And rental would probably be your best option, but you need to do a lot of research before you can answer that. Right. You know, as far as the subdivision, well, like Mr. Dwyer, like Mr. Zabrodnik and everybody else, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you drain it, works, the road works, this and that and everything else. A few concerns and waters address the concern that you want to make you have the right to do this, so they can't really stop it, but we can make it look as attractive as it can be. 
just a, a quick question that I have on that. Is that something that would have to be in place for the planning board to approve the definitive subdivision application? Or what's that? What what would have to be in uh, place? The the, the the rental unit you know, or the offsite allocation. Of we would like to have it in place, but because we have three options in the zoning bylaw mm -hmm. and only one of them is doesn't really exist, which is the trust. We would like to at least have an idea of what he would want to do, okay. but we can be flexible because of the time frame involved. He's not looking at he's not looking to put all eight lots right. in this year, but that's not going to happen. Right. He'll put in a few this year, a few next. He wants to spread it out for a variety of reasons. Okay. So and we can always hold one lot in escrow and not release it right. until this is settled. So okay. we, and we want to. We all realize this has to be one of these options and it's not negotiable it has to be it, it may sound like uh we are almost don't know what we're doing if it's it's that close the situation is we have 13 percent of our housing units are considered affordable the highest in the valley unusual and what we do not want to do is have that go below 10 percent so then any developer can come in and not only add a few units, but add a hundred right. units. So you know the impact in Sunland and other towns are facing. Yeah. So, however, there's no wolf at our door that we're going to be immediately challenged uh, on that front because we have to get 600 housing units built in town. And right now we do 10 or 12 houses a year. So it would take 50 years to really come down below 10%. So it's not that I'm against it. I think we have time before the wolf comes growling at our door regarding that 10% threshold. So and, and, you know, that's, that's a good point. We're not, we're not in a situation where we are screaming that we have an issue here. To be honest, Mr. Jalins' eight homes won't even be a drop in a bucket. However, a bunch of Mr. Jalinas' issue items comes in, eventually is going to have an impact. And like you said, the rate that we're going, Bill and I want to be here 50 years from now and deciding, hey, we, we're in trouble with it. Yeah, my business recalls being book dependent. 13% is our book. Just because we got it doesn't mean you don't want to add to it. Right. Okay. Yeah. We, we want to stay at least a stat somewhere near the status quo because you know this title of this board is planning board. So if we don't plan for the future, that's that's a horrible thing for us not to be doing. That's all. So we do have some time and we can be patient on this item. It's, it's, it's the first one. And we don't want to make the same mistake we made on the senior housing when we just got into a jam. Okay, anything else? Um, there was a, as part of the application, we are requesting a number of, of um, waivers from the subdivision rules and regs. Is that something that you wanted to discuss here tonight, right now? No. No. We, we, we really should because that, that's kind of part of the public hearing. Okay. But they're probably pretty straightforward stuff. So. Um, yeah, they're pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, a couple of, you know, one has to do with the, um, the 100 feet of um, intersection distance from the center line of the roadway to a horizontal curve. Um, we're a little shy of that, so just we just wanted to gauge the the board on how they feel. You know how they felt about most of those, those items are not they're 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 reasonably flexible. Okay. Okay, and and realize where you're going to be putting it. I mean, that, we, that's not the first time that's come up. Okay. And we're going to be okay. How can it can be? How can we kind of mitigate that by doing something or else? Sure. Okay. Look at it. Yeah, it's not. It's not terribly. It's, it's, it's not a route that I find by either. Exactly. Okay. Um, was there any other big, like, just mm -hmm. the spillway? Yeah, and then other, some other pretty technical that we can go over with Doucette, that will hash out with Doucette. Okay. Right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. I see you. See you in a month. Have a good Christmas. Good holidays. Good as well. Alright. Thanks. Thanks. Alright. Good luck. Good luck, man. Yes, I have a good Okay.
special permits probably lapsed by now. Oh yeah, yeah, that that was well over two years ago. So. Okay, but just something to talk about. And you know, John wants to be involved in that, so something to think. Okay. Okay. Um, the rest of the stuff just put out to the next okay. next agenda. Yeah, it's going to be a light. Uh, there is no, there is nothing on it. And the agenda because Mike won't be here, and hopefully Johnny will be, and we'll just talk about the other things and general information. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 history. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, John. Merry Christmas and happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. Um, safe holidays. At least love and God.